Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to this uh, Health Station live event. I'm Coach Ramirez, and I'm going to bring to you today, shoot and score. First, before we get started, boys and girls, I'm going to thank, I would like to thank the Chula Vista Elementary School District for their support in these live events, and uh, as well, the Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center, for uh, uh, which is where the Health Station is at. And so thank you to them. I really appreciate your support. So I'm going to go over today's agenda real quick so we know what to expect. First of all, we're going to go over the growing popularity of hockey. And that's where shoot and score comes from, if you didn't know. Uh, we're going to then go over the role of a fitness trainer and get into their careers and understand the ins and out of it. Uh, next. I'm going to go over some cues for something called a snapshot that hockey players take in order to score. We're going to build a hockey stick that you're going to be able to use beyond today. And then I'm going to show you a game that I call Rister, which is another name for that snapshot. And then finally, that real fun Kahoot game we, Kahoot game we all like. All right, well, let's get started. I want to start with the history of hockey, boys and girls. And so, uh, hockey, uh, its origins of hockey began in England uh, at about in about 18 and about at about 1876. And if if you didn't know, hockey did not start on ice, but it actually started on the field for uh, just like 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 we have field hockey nowadays. And so it wasn't until a Canadian that uh, put together the rules for ice hockey and actually had the first game on ice in Montreal, Canada soon after. So, in the hockey game today, as we know it as the National Hockey League, um, the championship, the, the, the championship that everybody wants to get to is called the Stanley Cup. And that was, that was started in 1893 and it, it has continued to this day. So, not only is there professional hockey, but those wishing to play professional hockey, a lot of the time have the chance to play hockey in, in the Olympics. OK, and so in the Olympics, the most popular sport on ice is hockey. So check that out the next time the Winter Olympics are on. Finally, that kind of a weird looking vehicle over on the bottom right side, that is a Zamboni. And the Zamboni is used when the when the skaters are not on the ice. It's used to smooth it out because it's always better to, sk to skate, ice skate on smoother ice than it is on rough ice which is what you get when you skate quite a bit. So let's move on now to the growing popularity of the game. So as, to, as you can see on the graph, since 2010 to 2018, there's been a steady growth of youth, boys and girls playing hockey to a total amount today, uh, or actually in 2018, as the graph shows, of 382,514 youth players. And as you can see, I want to encourage more girls to get in, into, into hockey or at least learn about it uh, because I'm about to introduce you to uh, Mika, who is an aspiring and very, very good hockey player that is wanting to play at a very high level herself. So let's see what she has to say. about two years old. About a year after learning to walk, Mika Yakota learned to glide. She's an athlete. Football, soccer, lacrosse. But her first love is hockey. Most girls don't really like, like hockey, but I don't think, I think they don't like it because they haven't tried it yet. Mika may not know it yet, but she's paving the way for other girls to follow in her footsteps. She's a rink rat. She loves being here and she's athletic and has a great attitude and just works and works and works. Chris Lockram is growing the girls game in Boulder. Players like Mika make his effort worthwhile. We felt that there were more girls would have the opportunity to play if we provided an all-girls option. And uh, we've done that and we've grown our girls program more than doubled the size of our girls program in two years. All 
Farai, where that was Mika, and uh, what, what, what I'm, what I'm at, where I'm at right now, boys and girls, I want to ask you guys a question um, that uh, I'm going to answer for you here in a second, but I want you to think about it. And the question is, what other sports are similar to ice hockey? And basically, I'm thinking about the sports that we are a little more familiar or could be more familiar uh, around San Diego and in the Southern California area. So what are what other sports are similar to ice hockey that that we may be familiar with? And then and then I want you on the question and answer chat area to answer this question and put in your thoughts and input to this to the second question. How are they similar? So how are the sports that are like hockey similar in the way that you play those games? And so I'm going to go ahead and switch to the next slide and show you those two sports that maybe you guessed or maybe you knew uh, that are similar to hockey. One of them is field hockey. And so as you can see there um, on the left, they're playing field, field hockey. And on the right, the other sport is lacrosse. And so to answer that second question on the Q&A, um, what are some of the things that are similar to ice hockey when you do play these other sports? OK, so put that in the Q&A. Very good. All right. So, you know me, boys and girls, I just told you a little bit about hockey. I don't like to sit around all the time. So why don't you stand up? We're going to do some dynamic stretching, as I've always done in my live events. So let's go ahead and get started on that. The first exercise or stretch I want to do with you is the 90 degrees, which is for the back legs, okay, and the calves, which are your hamstrings and calves. And so this is what you're going to do. You're going to start with your feet together. Okay, this is also going to work on balance. So make sure that you are holding your balance. I'll scoot back just a little bit more. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to lean forward and bring one leg up and come down, hold your balance, and stretch this back leg here. Now you can go ahead and bend your leg just a little bit to keep your balance. So let's do five of those on each side. That's two, three, four, and five. Let's go ahead and switch. Make sure you got some little bit of space since you are lifting your leg up and you're safe. One, two, three, and as you can see, it's called 90 degrees because I'm trying to make my legs into an angle that is 90 degrees to feel that stretch. And five, very good. The next stretch I wanna do with you guys, dynamic stretch, and remember dynamic stretch is stretching your muscles while you're moving. All right, the next one is called the reach up, which is gonna stretch your shoulders and this time your quads, which is the front part of your legs, your quadriceps. So you're going to reach up with one arm. doesn't matter which one. You're going to reach up with one arm, and you're going to hold your leg back here with the other one, and then stretch it out, and then bring it back down to get your balance back. Again, balance really important. Two, three. Really get that stretch in those quads. Four, right in here. Five. Let's go and switch to the next leg. One, two, As you can see, I'm trying to go in different directions with my knee and my arms. Four, one more, and five. Very good. Let's move, let's move just a little bit more with that, with the next dynamic stretching or warm up is the, I call it, uh, what we call it the A skips. And so the A skips is a form in which it, which looks like you're running. So you're gonna lift, you're gonna jump up and bring up one knee and then bring up the opposite arm looking like you're running, okay? We're gonna do 10 of these on both sides. Here we go, you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Very good. So if you are to practice those A skips, as you can see, it looks like you're running. Not only are you going to improve your running form, but they are used to try to improve your speed when you run as well. All right. So that is our little dynamic stretch. I hope you enjoyed that. Let's go ahead and get back to our presentation for this live event. 
All right, the next component of my event, boys and girls, is going to be to get into the career portion. And what I'm going to highlight for a career today is going to be the fitness trainer uh, that focuses on strength and conditioning for athletes. So the fitness trainer, boys and girls, are the coaches that are there to make sure that the athletes are at their peak performance. And what do I mean by peak performance? Their strength, okay, and their endurance in whatever it is that they're doing. That has to be at the peak performance. So during the games, they are playing their best. And so as a fitness trainer career, or also known as an aerobic instructor, the fitness trainers instruct individual groups. Okay, so they can instruct individual groups or they construct just individuals in order for to meet their needs in what it is that they need. So for example, they'll have them work on different movements for different muscles, depending on what it is that they're doing by either strengthening those muscles or making sure that they uh, build up endurance for whatever they're using those muscles for. All right, they also keep in mind the capabilities and limitations of each individual. And so, as they evaluate each individual and they know their abilities and needs, they're building the conditioning and develop the programs to meet each and every one of those person's needs. Because as you know, in team sports, it's, it's the whole team, but every individual has to play, right? Every individual has to take part. And so the more the, the trainer focuses on those individuals and what they need, the better it is. So let's take a look at this video and meet coach Matt Price, the strength and conditioning coach for the Los Angeles Kings uh, hockey team. Here we go. Two Stanley Cups in the last three seasons, but they are eliminated tonight from playoff contention. It only took weeks after the end of last season for the LA Kings to start training for the 2015-2016 season. I want you to use the uh, vibration, that second one on the bottom, like okay. strength one, three, four. That's the work. When they're out, that's when this is working. Good. For the first time in five years, the Kings had a full off season to recover and train. I think we've trained as well as we could after both Cups and after Conference Finals. just didn't have enough time. There's a recovery time there. These players are not machines, they're people. Many of the Kings came into training camp in some of the best shape of their lives. You know, I take a lot of pride in, in the workouts and training, and there's a lot of guys that do that, and it's, uh, it's important to us, and we want to you know, have that extra step. Matt Price is entering his second year as the head strength coach. Before taking the job, he spent years working in the Canadian Olympic system as a strength coach for the Vancouver and Sochi Olympics. Uh, I was based in Calgary and uh, spent a lot of time with the Canadian Alpine ski team. Not only do I think it was beneficial, I think it was actually critical that I step away and have that ability to think outside the box and tackle our challenges here with some fresh ideas. Maybe even bump the uh, upper body stuff to three sets for you. More sports science than just strength and conditioning. Price incorporates nutrition, data collection, middle forehead, and analytics as part of his program. And just chill. Price does a good job of, of keeping on stuff. He's a very smart guy when it comes to in the gym. What we're really asking you is to keep that rib tall and the core engaged instead of letting it collapse. Price is really hands-on. I've never had a strength coach that's so hands-on and that works as hard as he does to find ways to, to make the workouts better and, and it's always evolving and, and getting better. You started to get more settled as you went on, but right away, get underneath, core on, hips on. Did I make sure that I get around to ask them how they're doing every day, how they're feeling? You know, whether the energy's up, whether energy's down. What's up, Ronnie? What did you get my workout done this morning? Let's do it. Any piece of information or clue that I can get from them will help me adjust their day. All right. So as you can see, boys and girls, a fitness trainer isn't just somebody who says, go lift this, go lift that. He's actually involved in how the athletes are feeling. He's actually involved in their individual needs by using science and technology in order to give them the best information possible for them to be and get to their best for their games. Okay. Now, 
I want to show you a little bit about the fitness trainer and the future of the fitness trainer career. And as you can see here from the career one stop uh, uh, resource, it shows that the fitness trainer career in Southern California, because there's so many people basically gravitating to being healthy at this time, the fitness trainer is going to be a bright career in the future where there's going to be uh, plenty of jobs. There's going to be an opportunity for you to be to, to be in this career and and be successful. So think about that if you find that interesting and maybe have an aspiration of working for a professional uh, sport as an as a fitness trainer. So with that said, now we are going to go into uh, the snapshot and give you an introduction to how we are going to be using the hockey stick that we're going to build here in a minute. OK, so let's take a look at a professional coach teaching and coaching his players on the snapshot. Hi, I'm Glenn Coney, skills coach for the Vancouver Canucks. Today we're going to work on the techniques for the proper snapshot and shooting in stride. The snapshot's really important for the game of hockey because it's the most dangerous shot. You can go from stick handling to shooting in an instant and have a really quick dangerous shot. I really want you guys down low shooting with your knee and hip forward, okay? And your hips, feet are moving towards the net. Hips and shoulders towards the net. Ready? Let's go. Three key points to snapshot is thrusting your, your hips and knees forward, getting a good flex on the stick and follow through towards the target. Cut in, step, step, step. Good, inside, cut out, and shot. Nice. So you're shooting off either foot. That's the whole skill. Cut inside, out, shot. Nice, Jake. Okay. Inside, out, move your feet, move your feet. Yes, Jerry, that's perfect. It's one of the quickest shots in the game, and it's easy to get off. Pretty cool, huh? To be able to do that on ice, well, we won't be able to do it on ice, obviously, but we're going to get as close as possible to it. And so I want to take this moment right now to ask Mr. Bruder, who is in the who is in who is backstage right now monitoring certain things. Mr. Bruder, was there any answers to the question we asked about some of the things that are similar to hockey in those other sports? Hey, Coach Ramirez. Yeah, there was. Uh, we actually asked some questions for you as well. Awesome. What so maybe, are I, maybe I could start with that. Our friends of Soaring and Second were asking if ice hockey and street hockey or roller hockey are similar. Yeah, absolutely. And so roller hockey, um, I'm assuming, and this is just an assumption because for obvious reasons, they were um, uh, once once roller hockey began to get popular uh, or roller skating on on single on even regular skates or single lined uh, skates. Um, they started to play hockey and, and down the street from my house, they have a whole league on, on, uh, on, on, on roller hockey, which I think is really cool. So yes, a lot of the same rules apply for roller hockey and ice hockey. Awesome. And I know you had asked our attendees about similarities in other games. And I, I noticed two patterns. We have a lot of our, uh, our friends who shared that games such as soccer, and hockey and lacrosse and, and, and field hockey all utilize a goal that someone's trying to hit a puck or a ball into. Absolutely, yes. That's how you score. And then another part of scoring, they mentioned other games that utilize a stick to score other than hockey, such as golf. Uh, yep. And one of my favorites, I know it works a little different, but air hockey. Ah, <laughs> yes, air hockey is you, you use an object to try to hit uh, that puck, right? Or that object to try to get it into the goal. Yes, that's right. All those are very similar things. Did anybody mention um, or I wanted to put out there because of the game itself and you're actually hitting something and using a stick, did anybody put any uh, gear, protective gear that uh, a lot of the sports need? I didn't see anyone mention that, but I was thinking about that myself because I, I'm pretty sure all those sports use helmets, some form of padding on, uh, on the chest or arms and legs, correct? Absolutely, yes. And so it's always good to note that safety should be first in the things that you do and maybe getting uh, using some protective gear to make sure you don't get hurt. 
is at the top of the list. All right. Well, if there isn't anything else that you wanted to mention from the chat, Mr. Bruder, I can keep going. Yeah, I'm excited to hear their thoughts about this newest question you just put up. Yeah, so I just put up another question that I would like for you to put in the Q&A, boys and girls. So the question is, what new sport or physical activity might you be interested in playing in the future and why? Why would you want to start trying a new sport? Um, uh, uh, and tell us in the chat and we'll go over some of those answers later. All right. Very nice. Thank you very much, Mr. Bruder. Well, that brings us, boys and girls, to our build. I'm so excited for this. I'm going to go ahead and get my table going with my with all my materials. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, you can build with me or if you are finding that you need to go get the materials or you need to um, or you, you need to have a little bit more time to build, please go ahead and pause. Do what you have to do and then come join me when you are ready. So first thing we're going to do, boys and girls, is I'm going to use my ruler to go ahead. Um, actually, let me go over the materials real quick, which I have not done and I have here in front of me. The first thing I want you need to have, of course, is that three to four foot uh, long stick. Uh, don't worry about this, what stick it is. Don't worry about whether it does. It looks like it looks like the stick that I'm using. Um, just go ahead and make sure that it's kind of straight and you're able to use it and hold it as a hockey stick. The next thing is going to be cardboard. You're going to need to have some cardboard with you. Duct tape. Harris, could I jump in real quick? Absolutely. Just to help out our viewers, would it be possible to have you lower your camera just a little bit so we can see your table? Absolutely, yes. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you for that. So duct tape uh very sturdy tape in order to hold on to the head of the stick the next thing is going to be your scissors we all need scissors to make sure we uh to make sure we're able to cut the cardboard right and be careful with the scissors if you cannot do it please ask an adult to help you do it the ruler and then a shoe box that we're going to be using for a goal okay as well as uh, empty body containers or something that will stand uh, for the game to, to, be, uh, to be used as defensive uh, uh, pieces in the game. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use the cardboard that I have here and I'm going to use the straighter edges here as you can see. So if you can cut out the part of a cardboard box that has the straight edges, that might work best. And so we're going to measure the length. We're going to measure the length just like this and get to that six inches that I need in order to figure out that length. So I'm gonna make my mark right there, okay? And then I'm going to make my mark for the width, which is three and a half inches. Now, why did I choose these lengths? three and a half inches and six inches. The reason is we don't want it, you, on a regular hockey stick, the hockey stick is is quite a bit, is, uh, the hockey face of the stick is quite a bit longer. And I did not want it to be too long because I don't want, I don't want the, uh, the head to bend because you know how uh, unsturdy the cardboard is. And if it bends, obviously it will not work as well. So, Besides trying to keep the cardboard from bending, you want to be able to uh, make sure that the head is not, the, the face of the stick what, that you hit with is not too long. Um, and so it stays sturdy if it is shorter. So here's my rectangle I'm going to use for my head. So as you can see, now I'm going to cut that one out. And I'm going to cut it out first because instead of measuring three times, because you're going to need three pieces of the head. You're going to use the one you cut, you cut out to trace the other two. So I'm just going to put it right next to it, just like this. I'm going to trace for two more. I'm going to cut that out. 
And so now I'm not spending too much time trying to measure. Now, as you can see, it kind of bends a little bit as you are cutting. Try to bend the other areas when you cut up rather than rather than the um, the piece that you're going to use. And I'll show you. I'll show you that in a second. And again, as you are making your lines and you're measuring. Try to be as exact as possible, but don't worry if it's not exact, right? So here I'm cutting. If you bend this side, it'll make it easier and keep your piece that you're going to keep a lot sturdier. All right. Now, I have a little trivia, hockey trivia here. Did you know that the fastest puck shot was 114 miles per hour. The, the fastest puck ever shot is 114 miles per hour. I thought that was pretty impressive. So, all right, so we have the face and I'm gonna put them together so that they are sturdier as we are putting them together into, to play, to be able to uh, hit the puck with it or the ball, whatever we're gonna use. So now I'm gonna put uh, duct tape on it. And, and bind them together. So the duct tape, like I said, is a very sturdy piece of tape, so it's gonna work. Now, we're gonna make it easier by just using short pieces of tape. We're not gonna make it long and wrap it, so we're gonna use short pieces of tape to put them together. And I'm gonna try to do every corner because we want the corners to be together. So I'm gonna put one on this corner first. I'm going to take off another one. Again, if this is too difficult for you to do and you're able to ask an adult to help you, obviously that would be in your best interest to be able to cut the tape, right? So there's two pieces. As you can see, I'm working on the corners because, of course, the corners tend to bend, right? I got another trivia for you. Did you know? that the pucks that they use in games, they are kept cold, 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 cold on sub-zero temperatures to avoid bouncing on the ice. So when the pucks warm up, they soften up and then they begin to bounce on the ice. So as soon as they think that that's happening, they switch it out for another frozen puck, which is kind of cool. They, then it doesn't bounce. All right, one more corner. I hope this is coming along for you guys. If not, like I said, don't worry. You have plenty of time to work on it. So now I'm going to put two more pieces in the middle in order to really sturdy this up. There you go. And we don't need too much on this one because we are going to strengthen it on the stick itself. Now, when I put it on the stick, I don't know if you were able to notice, but the, the, the face of the stick is not at a 90 degree angle here. It is actually opened up to an angle between the stick and the puck. And the reason for that is because you're holding it and this needs to glide on the ground level while you're holding the stick at an angle. So as you can see in the picture, you can see the angle of the stick there and that's what we're going to work on. All right, so now the other thing I need you to understand too is that if you are a right-hander, you want to be able to, uh, you want to be able to put it on the side that you're going to be able to hit the stick or the puck with the right hand. So you want the complete face of the of the stick or uh, uh, the head of the stick here to be facing and be able to hit the puck this way. If you're a lefty, you want to put it on the other side so you can face it and hit it this way. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it lefty for the demonstration. Even though I am not, so I'm going to place 
as you can see, I'm going to place the head of the club, head of the stick on at an angle like this. The angle's not that important um, as long as that it, it, it is at an angle and it makes it easier for you to swing and strike the puck or the ball, which is what we're using. So again, easiest to use small pieces. I'm just going to take, stick it on one side of the face and then go down to the stick and wrap it around. Like I said, duct tape works on everything. And so it's a good material to use when you're doing a DIY job. <laughs> All right, take another small piece, put it on nice and tight, wrap it around the stick as best as possible. So as you can see, I've got one side done, but look, it's a little floppy, right? So I'm going to turn it around and make sure that it's dirty on the other side. Okay, put it on the stick, slide it down, make sure you get all of the stick on there. And as you can see, I'm wrapping it around the stick and then going on to the face of the club of the stick the hockey stick. All right. Again, wrap it around the wood stick and then push down. Make sure it's kind of holding really good. And there it is. Very, very sturdy at an angle as I hold it. OK, so. This isn't completely necessary if you want to use more of the duct tape, but in order to kind of bind it as one, because that's how hockey sticks are made, they put the head of the the head of the hockey stick is then uh, connected to the stick itself. So not like a um, not like a golf club where the head of the golf club is detached, right? And there's and it's kind of stuck together. So I'm going to go ahead and start somewhere. Again, wrapping each each corner and I'm just going to take the electric tape and just kind of go around all different parts and this is actually what hockey players do to their sticks they go ahead and and wrap tape around the the heads of the stick that they hit and they go around it just to give it a little more sturdiness I'm going to go down underneath and then the electric tape works then as it's it's easily bendable and so you can go around it a few times. So one more piece of trivia about hockey. Did you know that when a player scores, one player scores three goals in one game, that's called a hat trick. Okay, that's called a hat trick. And I'll give you a little clue that you should try to remember that for later on in the presentation. All right, very good. So I've completed my hockey stick. And as you can see, it is at an angle in order for me to be able to uh, strike the puck or the ball. Uh, so that is completed. I hope you guys are at a certain point to where you're able to use it. But again, if not, just watch and then you guys can uh, watch the presentation again later. Pause it, watch the presentation later in order to play the game. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play the show you guys, show you guys how to hit that wrist, that snapshot real quick. Oops, I moved it again. Let me keep it down. There you go. All right, boys and girls, so I'm going to go ahead and go through the cues for a snapshot quickly. All right, so that you can see how exactly you want to hit that snapshot. So first of all, you want to make sure that you're holding the club in the or the, the stick in the correct form. And so I'm going to swing as a lefty. So I'm going to make sure that I have, first of all, my thumbs up. Make sure your thumbs are up when you hold the stick. Thumbs up, right hand as a lefty at the top left hand as a lefty at the bottom with your hands separated. 
So thumbs up, grip the stick, now you're ready to roll. The next thing you wanna know after holding the stick, boys and girls, is uh, my target is, let's say it's that way, I'm gonna point my shoulder to the target. Not my front side, but my shoulder, okay? Then I'm going to spread my legs out just a bit. Now with the stick, with the stick face on the ball, you're gonna transfer your legs forward. So put the stick, stick face on the ball, just like this. Let me go ahead and scoop that. Stick face on the ball, you're going to get ready from this point to strike the ball or push the ball. So you're gonna lead, you're gonna, you're gonna put your weight forward on your front side, okay? Then what you're gonna go is you're gonna lead with your hands. So as you can see, this is a really important part. You're gonna lead the strike with your hands, then you're gonna turn your hips, okay? And then you're going to aggressively, aggressively push the ball and snap your wrist as you shoot, okay? Now, as you saw, my, my stick did not go all the way around. I went through and I stopped right here. In hockey, it's called high sticking if you bring your stick up above the waist. So, face of the, face of the stick on the ball, lean forward, lean, put your weight on your front leg, lead with your hands, turn your hips, and aggressively push the ball and snap your hips. All right, so you can see the ball came back kind of quick one more time. There you go. So we're going to use that shot in order to play our game here in this moment. Or I'm going to show you the game so you can play later. OK, so here's the game snapshot game called Rister is what I call it. So what you're going to do is I asked you to get those water bottles or something. OK, whoops. I'm going to use these balls as defensive. As defensive players. And what you're going to do is on the shoe box, you're going to try to hit it by moving your stick around into a position where you can score into the box. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I'm going to move around this way because I know I don't want to hit that. I'm going to put my club on the ball, lean forward. Go! That's one. I'm going to take another one. Maybe I'll go to a different spot. Oh, missed that one. One more shot. Maybe get over here on this spot. Score! So as you can see, I try to think of the cues that I taught you in order to make a good shot and try to be accurate in shooting into the goal. Now, how can you make it as more challenging? You can move around these into the different spots. You can also try to get a hat trick, which is score, remember, the three different goals in a certain amount of time and then try to improve that time. So those are different ways in which you can uh, you can play the game uh, Rister and uh, and have fun. And again, this the, the stick, your hockey stick could also be obviously be played outside um, with your family. So I'm going to put that aside, boys and girls, because yes, guess what? It is time for Kahoot. So I'm going to that's the pin that you see on the screen. You should see it on the Q&A as well. And what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to transfer into the Kahoot game. So at this time, uh, Mr. Bruder, I asked the question earlier and I was wondering if there were any answers of students who might be thinking about playing a new sport. Hey, Coach. Yeah, there were. Uh, we had Eric share that before this, didn't know that field hockey was a sport, so that might be something that he looks into. Very cool. It's a very fun sport. We also had Kylie mention an interest in swimming or perhaps water polo, which I know, correct me if I'm wrong, Coach Ramirez, those are both uh, Olympic sports. Absolutely. Yes. And it being Olympic sports, there's a lot of opportunities out there uh, as youth players to get into it. We also had Alex share an interest in playing softball. Mm. And we had Justin share an interest in playing football. Very cool. 
we did have some wonderings. Could you tell us, uh, uh, while we ha wait for our friends to join in on the uh, Kahoot, can you tell us a little bit about some of the sports that you see train out there at the Elite Athlete Training Center? Absolutely. So, actually, we do have a, um, a uh, turfed uh, uh, field hockey field, which brings a lot of, of teams from all over the world to use. Obviously, because of the weather here, and then also because of uh, uh, of the facility that we have here to entertain uh, the athletes to come and play their sports. So we do have a field hockey facility here. Um, another real popular one is BMX. So there's uh, there's actually three little BMX tracks, not tracks, but um, yeah, I guess tracks that they that that they have for training here, and. And um, that's a real popular one from people from all over the world as well. Um, let's see, we have the track and field team that uh, a lot of the jumpers for track and field are here uh, that are training. We have archery. So I would say to keep a lookout for those of you who are thinking maybe archery might be a fun thing for you guys to do. They're always having lessons uh, and, uh, and, and classes to teach uh, uh, youth archers. So um, that's be a good one to, uh, to kind of look into here at the at the training center. And of course, uh, I'm not sure when they would open, but um, but they do they they offered those before uh, COVID and they are talking about making sure that they're being offered again after. So very some uh, very cool thing for you guys to look into. And if I remember it, is, is there a, also a beach volleyball set up? Yes. There? Yeah, so right uh, next to my classroom, there is a beach volleyball game or volleyball co uh, court with like six six different volleyball courts. And right now, actually, college players uh, are here or college players come on the weekends and use it. And then sometimes they use it for weeks at a time. And so um, the facility is, is really there for everybody from all over the world in the United States to come and use. So, Coach Ramirez, we're, we're still waiting for minute or two here for a few more players to jump in but i had a question for you okay same thing you asked our students if you were to try a new sport what sport would you try and why <laughs> so i think the one sport I, and and honestly after doing um after doing this live event and preparing for it i've uh i've all uh, i'm thinking I'm thinking learning to skate and skate fast and, and play this game would be a lot of fun to do. Uh, but on the on another hand, I think it, as far as competing, um, I, I I've gotten into cycling and using uh, using my bike for exercise. And uh, I thought that racing on a bicycle on a street bike would be really, really fun to do to take in the scenery and compete and train for that. I thought that would be something fun to do as a sport. Well, Coach Ramirez, if you work hard enough, maybe you can make it on the San Diego Gulls professional hockey team. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be something else, wouldn't it? All right. Maybe, I think we're ready. Another life. <laughs> maybe. I think we're ready to play this Kahoot game. All right. Let's go ahead and do this. Shoot and score. Here we go. All right, so the first question, what is the name of the object they push and strike with a hockey stick? Is it, is it a red triangle tennis ball? Is it blue diamond baseball? Is it orange circle ball or puck? Is it green square football? Again, is it red triangle tennis ball? blue diamond baseball or ball or puck orange circle or green square football which one which uh what is the name of the object they push and strike with a hockey stick red triangle tennis ball blue diamond baseball orange circle ball or puck green square football All right. Ooh, all right, very nice. 
Here we go. Space Oryx taking the lead here. Next question. On what surface is hockey played on? On what surface is hockey played on? Is it played on red triangle concrete, blue diamond wood floor, orange circle water, or green square ice? On what surface is hockey played on? Red triangle concrete, blue diamond wood floor, orange circle water, green square ice. On what surface is hockey played on? Red triangle concrete. Blue diamond wood floor, orange circle water, green square ice. Nice job, all right. Let's see who has taken the lead. Rapid Lark taking the lead. All right, next question. What is the name of the funny looking vehicle that smooths out the ice? Is it Red Triangle Cat? Blue diamond Samboni, orange circle crawler, green square speedster. What is the name of the funny looking vehicle that smooths out the ice? Red triangle cat, blue diamond Zamboni, orange circle crawler, Green Square Speedster. What is the name of the funny looking vehicle that smooths out the ice? That is a funny looking vehicle for sure. Red Triangle Cat, Blue Diamond Zamboni, Orange Circle Crawler, Green Square Speedster. Zamboni, very good. Let's see who's taking the lead right here. Rapid Lark continues with the lead. And the final question for today's Kahoot. What is it called when a hockey player scores three times in one game? What is it called when a hockey player scores three times in one game? Is it red triangle attaboy? Is it blue diamond home run? Is it orange circle diamond level, or is it green square hat trick? Again, what is it called when a hockey player scores three times in one game? Red triangle attaboy, blue diamond home run, orange circle diamond level, green square hat trick. What is it called when a hockey player scores three times in one game? All right, we are down to the end of the game. Hat trick is correct. We got 27 total. Let's see what kind of podium we have here. Purple squid in third place. Nice. Space Oryx takes second. And in the spotlight, Rapid Lark. Very good. All right. Good job, boys and girls. I am going now to go back to my other screen. All right. So, boys and girls, this comes, this uh, uh, almost wraps up my event with you guys today shoot and score i want to remind you that the live events are put into our innovation channel on youtube as well we also have the physical education channel uh, on youtube that you guys can go in and check out the lessons the pe lessons we have for you by our very own PE teachers here in Chula Vista elementary school district subscribe please to both channels that would be awesome and then finally, don't miss next week by joining Mrs. Q 
for sensational slithering snakes, boys and girls. So thank you. Thank you again for joining me this week, uh, joining me today. And uh, I hope that you guys take up either hockey or start playing hockey to get that physical activity going or try a new sport like we talked about today. All right, I'm Coach Ramirez. See you guys next time.